So welcome to part two. So I've copied across the most important bits for us, you know, what we started with, what we're aiming for, how we slightly modified this thing that we were starting with, and we're considering this bit, and how we renamed Z, X, and then we've renamed the square root of V, Y. So X is standard normally distributed, and V is the square root of this chi-squared distribution with new degrees of freedom. And at the end of the previous video, we found out the PDF for the distribution of y. It's zero for the negative real numbers, and then for the positive real numbers, it is equal to this thing. Now what we want to do is consider how is this thing going to be distributed, x over y, which is very almost the t-distribution. It's just a constant times this thing. This is more complicated considering how this one distribution divided by another distribution is going to be distributed. Remember, x and y are independent. The way we're going to figure out how they are distributed is by first thinking about how the bivariate distribution of the two is going to be distributed. So x can take on any value from negative infinity to infinity and the probability that it gets a certain value or the probability density that it gets a certain value is distributed according to the standard normals, PDF, and y can take on any positive real number with this PDF. So they're independent, so the probability you'll, that you'll get a certain x value and a certain y value is then just given by the product of those two PDFs, or the probability density, that I should say, that you'll get a, a certain x value with a certain y value is given by the product of those two. So we can consider their bivariate distribution over like the two-dimensional plane of possible x and y values, or half of that plane, because of course the y negative values aren't included, they're all going to have PDF zero. And then what we can think about is all of the values in that half plane that will give us the same value when you divide x by y, and then we can try and work out from that the probability density of therefore getting a certain value for this quotient. That's going to be our approach to firstly consider the bivariate distribution of x and y, which are independent, and then think about all of the values in the plane that will give the same value of this quotient, and then from that work out the CDF for it, and then differentiate it to find out the TDF, uh, sorry, the PDF. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So firstly, I'm going to call this new random variable, which is x divided by y, I am going to call that t. Now, of course, it's not quite the t-distribution. It's not the final form of the t-distribution. The final form is going to be a constant multiple of this. We need to put in the square root of nu. However, it's very almost there, so I am going to call it t because it's so almost there, but it's not going to be the final form of the t-distribution. But just so that I've got a good name for this random variable. I'm going to call it the random variable t, and it is an appropriate name for it. We'll come back to how t is going to be distributed in a moment. Firstly, we're going to think of a simpler question, which is we have our random variable x, we have our random variable y, they are independent, and we're going to think about how are they then distributed on the plane. So here we have the x-axis, here we have the y-axis, and then there's a distribution a probability distribution over this plane. Now, of course, for all of the y is a negative number, the PDF is zero here. But for the parts where y is a positive number, the PDF is non-zero. And because we're assuming x and y are independent, the probability density that I get a certain value x times, x, sorry, xy, this point in the plane where y is positive, is just going to be the PDF that I get the value x times the PDF that I get the value y. Now, x is distributed normal naught 1, so the PDF that I get the value x is just going to be 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the negative a half x squared. And then we know the PDF that I get the value y, as long as y is a positive number, it's equal to this thing. So I've just put this in here, so 2 times a half to the power of nu over 2, divided by gamma nu over 2, y to the power of nu minus 1, e to the negative a half y squared. So this now is the joint PDF for my joint random variable x, y in this 
part of the plane where y is positive in this half of the plane where y is positive. Now let's just have a play about with this for a moment and think about this. So we've got all of these points in this half of the plane as possible answers to what we will get when we pick from x and we pick from y. And then let's think about what the possible t values we would get are. So if I get this point, little x, little y here, what t value would that correspond to? So I'd have to take my x value, which is positive on this picture, and I'd have to take my y value, which I know is always positive because I'm never going to get from this half of the plane, and I'd have to do one over the other. I'd have to do the x over the y, and that would give me the t value for this point. And of course, I'm going to get a positive answer here because x is positive and y is positive. And you can see that I can make x bigger and bigger all of this part of the plane going off to infinity here is included in my possible range space. So I could make x bigger and bigger and bigger. Yes, it becomes very unlikely because of the way the normal distribution tails off that I'll get these very big x values, but they are still possible. So I could get a very, very big x value here, and I could, in fact, keep that y value the same. I could be going along this line of points here, and you can see that I can make this t bigger and bigger and bigger. So I'm just exploring what the range space of my random variable t is going to be, and I can see that it's going to go off to negative, sorry, positive infinity, uh, because I can make this x bigger and bigger here whilst keeping this y fixed. And I'm just examining this sort of line of points here. Also, it's obviously going to go off to negative infinity as well. It's going to include zero because I can put x as I could get x is equal to zero here, and that would give me a t is equal to zero value. And it's also going to go off to negative infinity because I can get negative x values. Again, still considering this line of constant fixed y um, points, I can get ne negative x values and I can get indefinitely negative values values of x that are going off to negative infinity, so I can make this more and more minus-y. Um, so I, my t range space, therefore, is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. The next question is, which points in this half plane are going to give me the same value for t? Well, they are going to be the points where x divided by y is equal to t. So I then can just rearrange this into an equation for y and x, and it will tell me, you know, from basic um, understanding of graphs that you will or will have, I can then work out the locus of points in this half plane that all share a common t value. So as I've just argued, the possible values that t can take are between negative infinity and infinity. So that's going to be the range space for my uh, random variable t. Now what I want to do is consider the locus of points, all the points in this hemiplane that give me the same value of t. So I'm going to imagine fixing a t value, and we could imagine taking a specific one. So you could imagine asking what points in this hemiplane are going to have t value 1. So I put 1 here, it's going to be all the points where x divided by y is equal to 1. I can just rearrange that to get that it's all the points where x is equal to y. And I've actually drawn that on here, so it's going to be this sort of ray, this half straight line, not including this bit, because this bit we know isn't really included, it's all zero here. So this is the important bit here. Um, so all of these points on this straight line, they're all going to give the same t value, and that t value is going to be 1. More generally, if I imagine a fixed t, I can rearrange this into x is equal to ty, so I've now got, if you give me a y value, what the x value has to be, and this is kind of the gradient then, this t. Now, of course, we're not more not used to thinking of graphs uh, where the y, uh, where we have y is a function of x. However, think now x is a function of y. This is now, we're imagining the dependent axis, and this is the independent axis, and this is the gradient. So it's just kind of as though you've flipped everything around a little bit. So the bigger you make t, the um, steeper the gradient is going to be, so it's going to be a line like this as you make it steeper, and indeed as you make t closer and closer to positive infinity, you're going to get closer and closer to this um, horizontal line here. This is the line where t is equal to infinity, if you like. And then when t is equal to zero, uh, you're just going to get x is equal to zero, so that's this um, vertical line here, but in the flipped 
sense, it's kind of like the, it's the line with gradient zero. If you can imagine in your head flipping this round, so bringing this axis up here, bringing this axis down here, all you have to do effectively is flip it in this sort of line of symmetry here. Uh, and then it's the same sort of picture as you're more used to visualizing for graphs. And then if t is a negative value, that will have a gradient going off in this direction. So t is equal to negative one will be the line like this. And then as you make it more steeply negative, it'll be going down like so. So these half rays, these straight lines in the hemiplane, these are the points or these are the loci of constant t value in my hemiplane. So I'm beginning to understand uh, how my random variable t is going to work. I know the distribution over my hemiplane for getting a certain value x and y, and now I know all these points that are going to have the same t value. So now I can start to think about how I'm going to work out the PDF or the CDF is what we're going to actually do. The PDF is more complicated. We're not going to go there. It's more easy to make mistakes if you do PDF. So we're going to think about how is the CDF of this going to work and we're going to need to then do a double integral of this PDF over a certain um, part of this hemiplane and then we'll differentiate it with respect to a t value uh, to then get the PDF and we'll find that it comes out as this.